all set. You all set, John? I am. Conference for recording has started. Good morning. This is a deliberation um, in connection with uh, docket number 2012-00487, if I've got it correctly. My name is Paul Rudman. I am an alternate commissioner. Uh, and with me is alternate commissioner uh, John Adler. I would approve the proposed agreement amended in court with stipulation entered into by the company and the public advocate. Despite the efforts of the interveners to obfuscate, the issue before us, I believe, is straightforward. Will the proposed agreement benefit the ratepayers of the company, and is it not adverse to the public interest, nor inconsistent with the interests of the company or its ratepayers? On review of the evidence offered and the arguments of counsel, I conclude, as the commission did almost two decades ago, that the agreement will benefit the ratepayers of the company and is not adverse to the public interest, nor inconsistent with the interests of the company's ratepayers and investors. Let me first respond to the arguments of the able hearing examiner. The company's charter states the company's purpose is conveying to the village of Freiburg and vicinity a supply of pure water for domestic and other purposes. I believe the purpose clause must be given broad interpretation. I suggest that domestic means use by the residents of Freiburg and vicinity for normal household uses, that is, drinking, cooking, washing, and in the 19th century, watering animals and household gardens. Other uses, I suggest, would include the sale of water for resale. Thus, the company, I believe, is authorized by its charter to sell water at both a retail and wholesale level, as it has done uh, without challenge uh, for many years. Uh, challenge, because um, I suggest the uh, legislator's use of the word pure means potable water. The legislator could not have intended a federal definition of pure water adopted a century later. Even if the company's activities are ultra-virus, Section 304 of the Maine Business Corporation Act is applicable, and those actions are not to be challenged except for the reasons set forth in the statute, none of which is present here. It has been suggested that the proposed agreement be reviewed under two sections of Title 35A, Section 703A3, out of 3A, and Section 1101. Section 703 3A is not applicable because the company is not providing a service at a discounted rate. In fact, depending upon the amount of water purchased, the service may be provided at a higher rate. I would again apply the same standard of review, the no harm standard. The sale of water <coughs> under the proposed agreement will subsidize the ratepayers of the company. As the public advocate safely notes the proposed agreement as amended by the six stipulated conditions that Freiburg Water Company has adopted is beneficial to the customers of Freiburg Water because it ensures an enhanced and portable source of revenues from this lake for the benefit of FNC and its customers. Section 1101 requires approval of the disposition of assets necessary um, are useful in providing utility services. Although the agreement does not contemplate a disposition of well one, it does provide for the transfer of control of the well for a long period of time. I believe it is appropriate to review the proposed agreement under the same standard used for proposal of the early agreement, the 1997 agreement. 
the no net, no net harm public interest standard. For the past 17 years, the parties have operated under an agreement which has provided the company with over 40% of its revenues to the monetary benefit of the company's ratepayer. It is unchallenged that the proposed agreement provides greater benefits to the company or it will receive a guaranteed level of revenue that is significantly higher than the minimum payments due under the 1997 agreement and will do so in regular payments to assure the company's cash flow. Should an emergency situation occur, the company will continue to have well number one as a backup source of water and there continues to be provision for cancellation of the agreement should circumstances require. The proposed agreement does not differ substantially from the agreement under which the party parties have operated for almost two decades. The proposed financial changes are in the company's interest and therefore inure to the ratepayers and the changes are in, uh, in control, control of the lease premises are not unreasonable. I trust my colleague will concur. Uh, 